morning church or afternoon. Um, welcome to Audacious Church to Oceans. My name's Rachel Ray and I'm here today to share with you a key scripture that means something to me. So the one I've chosen, because let's face it, there are many, is Ephesians 2 verse 4 onwards. It says, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And the thing that struck me when I was reading this passage last week is that it, there's three togethers there. We're made alive together with God. We are raised up together with Jesus and we're seated together with Jesus in the heavenly places. So what, what on earth does that mean? Well, for me, I guess when I first became a Christian, that's when I felt that I've been made alive. You know, you think spiritually it's like the lights switch on and many of us might have experienced that, some maybe not. But it was something that for me happened when I was about 12. I knew of God and I, you know, had heard about him. And I guess mentally I believed he was there. But it wasn't until I surrendered in my heart and said, OK, Jesus, I believe that you're real. I believe that when you died on the cross, it was for my sins or this verse, this word here, trespass, <laughs> trespasses. I believe that and I know that I want forgiveness and I want to be made right with God. I want to follow you. So when I did that, I felt a lightness. I felt a joy. I felt like something switched on and I knew that God was real and if you haven't experienced that yet, he is literally a prayer away um, and he's there for you because it says here, God who is rich in mercy because of his great love. That's why even when we're dead in trespasses, even if you feel like dead and separated from God and so burdened with the things that you feel you've done wrong, you know what? God loves you so much. He's here to forgive. He's here to make us new. He's here to make us alive. And even if, you know, that's happened to you, but then you've drifted away, God is always that waiting father saying, come back, I can renew you, I can raise you up. In fact, for me, you know, being 12, it's not like I'd lived a massive life of debauchery, but sin was simply that selfish human nature that's within us all and surrendering ourselves to say, right, it's not me who's on the throne of my life, it's you, Jesus, that is when we are made alive and we know him. But also it says here that we're raised up together with him. So for me, and what I want to focus on for us today is that feeling of when God raises us up. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes you can wake up in the morning and it's like the burdens of the world hit you again, don't they? You wake up and you sort of remember, oh, the pandemic, or you know maybe it's your financial struggles or family struggles. It could be need for healing. But just some of the ongoing, even just vague anxiety or fear or, or heaviness, sometimes these things just feel like they're weighing us down. But Christ raised us up together with him and he lifted us. And it, spiritually, he can refresh and lift us above our circumstances. He's the one that can heal us, take off that heaviness, heal our broken hearts, heal our bodies. That is the same power that rose Jesus from the dead are working us. But the third together is that he has seated us with him together in heavenly places. So when I picture that, I, you know, you have to actually look back, just rewind a chapter because it says actually that the working of his mighty power in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that is which is to come. So I have this mental image and it's of Christ sitting on his throne at the right hand of the Father and all powers and authority, all human powers, be it kings, be it politicians, be it evil dictators, whatever they are, are under his feet. He is above them. He is raised above them. 
but also any invisible powers. It says here he's above powers and principalities. Any evil forces, any um, darkness, he is above. He has defeated that on the cross and he is seated at the right hand of God. But this is where, in Ephesians 2, it says we're seated together with him. He's achieved this victory on the cross. He's defeated darkness, he's defeated sickness, he's defeated evil. He's paid the price for forgiveness of our sins and he's seated at the right hand of God. And as if that's not enough, he's raised us up spiritually to be seated with him. So what does that tell me? When I wake up in the morning and maybe go, oh, great, what, you know, what's happening today? It reminds me to wait in God's presence and ask him to just show me afresh his perspective, that everything's under his feet, that he is the one that's raised us up, made us alive and seated with him. And it says that he's put all things under his feet and given him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. You know, why did Jesus ascend to heaven and leave the Holy Spirit? So it was so that he could equip us all to be full of, of his presence, to be with him and to bring his authority on earth. So as we go out to work, as we go to the shops, as we drop our kids at school, as we tidy our houses, whatever we're doing, actually God's presence was with us. His Holy Spirit is in us. We're actually coming from a position of authority with him to pray over our homes, to pray over our families, our schools, our workplace, to speak God's word, to say, let his will be done, let his kingdom come. But also he's in us, we live in that demonstration of that. So as we show love and kindness and grace to other people, we're, sh we're sharing his love. As we have, you know, serve others and help others, we're sharing his love. But sometimes we just feel too shrunken down, oppressed, distracted, discouraged to remember this. So each day I'll, I encourage myself and I'm encouraging you each day to seek him, to remind ourselves, Lord, fill us afresh with your spirit. Help us to know that we're alive with you, that we're raised with you and we're seated together with you. And let's just pray for that now. Let's just pray for the Holy Spirit's infilling. Because, you know, when the, the Holy Spirit first came at Pentecost, as we heard um, a couple of Sundays ago, the, the Holy Spirit filled them all. And there was a, a sense of the fire of God and the presence of God. And actually, when Peter preached, he said that Jesus had raised and was seated at the right hand of the Father and he'd sent the Holy Spirit. So from that authority and from that knowledge that we're seated with him, let's just pray for ourselves and our families. Lord Jesus, I just commit our way to you today. Lord, I pray that you would fill us afresh, that you'd raise us up right now in our spirits, that you'd raise us in our hearts, that you'd fill us afresh with joy, with a sense of your authority, a sense of your victory. And Lord, I pray that you'd show us how to serve others, how to bring your kingdom wherever we are. Lord, we just pray, as you taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done today in our lives, in our homes, in our families. Lord, I pray for your kingdom come and your healing in our bodies, in our minds, in our, our um, emotions. Lord, that you would lift us, that we know that your presence is within us. And Lord Jesus, we commit our way to you. Everything we do today, let us be guided by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the joy that you give us, Lord. And we thank you that you are seated far above every power, every principality, every name that is or is to come. There is no one greater than you. There is no one higher than you. All things are under your feet. And help us to know that in our spirits, to remember that we're seated with you in a position of authority. And as we pray alongside you, Lord, we, we can know your grace and your love and your answers to our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So have a great day or evening, whatever you're doing. And um, thanks for listening. And let's keep praying for each other because we're the church and we're together in Christ. Amen.